Yo, it's so busy today. <sighs> Are we leaving at five? Again today, ladies. Yo. Oh, I know. I've seen 20 patients today. So few of us and so many of them. And it's worse now with all those late bookers and teenagers. Yo, it's just too much work and my husband has been getting on my last nerve. He doesn't want to help with anything, not even the kids. And now his sister's teenager moved in with us, always rolling her eyes with her earphones on all the time. You are scum to I feel you, sister. This work is exhausting. My life is exhausting. I've been having so much trouble sleeping lately and my memory, yo, I'm so forgetful. I even forgot my son's grade meeting on Monday. I feel you. Many of us are having these problems, feeling irritated, not getting enough sleep, feeling up all the time. If it's not the stress at work, it's the stress at home. And it's common for nurses to feel this depression and burnout. Yeah, but all of that makes it difficult for me to do all the things I have to do. It's the housework, the job, the kids. I wish these bosses would realize the amount of stress we have to work under. There's always something, always a complaint. You didn't do this, you must do this and that. You, hi, suka. Yes, I'm so glad you brought this up, Sister Kumar, because I heard that there's talks of starting a staff wellness group. I don't know. It might be fun. Might be a good way to talk about the stress. Hmm. And what good do you think that's gonna do? Make these difficult patients go away? No, but it might help us talk about our issues and maybe we can find a way to get help and make things better. I mean, you know, Oh, Sister Quez, she does that thing with the stretching and the breathing. <laughs> mm. I don't know, maybe she can help us. She can teach us. Yeah, and Sister Dlamini, doesn't she lead the choir at a church? She could help us set up a staff choir and we could sing at those groups. Or maybe we could even talk about the things we need to change here at the clinic so that all that works better for us. Mm. You know, when it sometimes feels like it's all too much, I'll just take a minute, sometimes less than a minute, just to breathe really slowly in and out. And that really helps to feel calm. I guess we have to do something about these patients. Do you remember that young girl who came from so far? So young, all on her own. I had no idea what's going on. She kept on staring down at the floor while I was speaking to her. Anyway, you know, I noticed that it's always the uncooperative patients who are so scared. They, I don't know if they don't know what's going on or if they're having problems at home. Yeah, I remember that lady from last week. Was she 44 or 45? The one with all the kids at home. So rude and she refused to push in the second stage. But you know what I noticed? I saw that she had bruises. She had old ones and new ones. And I'm thinking there might be abuse there. The more I think about it, maybe I should have tried to help her with a referral or something. Or maybe just try to have spoken to her about the situation while she was still here for the pregnancy. Yeah, but we can't be responsible for all that social whatever. We are not psychologists or social workers. Now we must also do the mental health screening. It's too much work. I must also do counseling. I don't know how to do that. And where's the time for that? All these questions will lead up to a whole can of worms. No man. We can't manage everybody like this. Yeah, ne? that's hard. Eh? But you know, the mental health screening is only three questions. And once you know your patient isn't doing good, then you can get them help. Mm. Like maybe if we just took a little bit of extra time in the beginning with the mental health support or counseling, I heard this really helps. Like maybe she won't miss her appointments and she'll take a medication. Hmm, Yazin, I know that if I take care of my patient's physical health and also her mental health, that it reminds me why I became a nurse. And at the end of the day, at the end of a shift, I feel good. You remember that? 
ESMO training on respectful care, the six empathic skills. Remember they said mm. if it's a part of how we work every day with our patients, it can make a difference. I suppose us nurses see them often during their pregnancies and after. You know, we may be the only people that can actually listen to them. One conversation that's done with kindness, you know, to open their minds, help them feel worthy. And maybe if we refer after that, they might be able to, there are better chances that they might take up their referrals. Yeah, but that takes too much time. And where do they even go? We don't have a mental health nurse here. And there's women who are being beaten up at home and are hungry. What can you even do to help them? Isn't there an NGO just up the road, the one that helps them learn all these new skills like sewing and gardening so they can earn money? And that lady Maria, she was here, when was it, like two weeks ago? Mm. Hmm? And she said that we can refer patients to them. Oh, I remember now. There's a church around the corner and they have a support group for women on a Saturday. Maybe I can ask them if the woman can join the support group. Hey, Sister Bengu, look at the time. Come, we need to go to the waiting room. It's so lovely to see you today. My name is Sister Bengu and this is Sister Olifil. Good morning, lovely ladies. So at this clinic, we wanting to know about your emotional health as well as your physical health. Because we know both are important for a healthy pregnancy, a healthy baby, as well as a healthy mommy. So when Sister Bengu and I sit with you a little later in private, we would like to ask you some questions just about how you are feeling. No? Common mental health problems like depression or anxiety can be very common during pregnancy. And many mothers feel this way, like worrying too much, not getting along with people, feeling loneliness, hopelessness, and it can feel like you're in a dark tunnel. And these feelings don't have to be a scary thing. It doesn't mean that you're a bad mother. It doesn't make you crazy or mad or lazy. Yeah, so depression, anxiety, stress, worry, they can make it difficult to attend your clinic visits. And if you're feeling this way, what else might be hard to do? Uh, sleeping, maybe sleeping too much or not sleeping properly. Yes, yeah. It's taking care of the children. Yeah, that's a really good one. Anything else? Getting up for work. Yeah. And these mental health problems can affect how we think, what we feel, and what we do. And this can also affect our functioning in our everyday lives, making it harder for us to do the things that we want to do, that we need to do, or even those that we have to do. Are there any questions? So you say these feelings are common, why? Okay, so I'm so glad you asked that question. So yes, they are common. So there are many reasons why women or people develop mental health problems such as depression and anxiety. So it could be that they're not getting along with a partner. It could be that there's conflict within the home environment, financial problems, hunger. There could also be a history of depression or anxiety in the family. And then also it could be that something really bad happened in the past. So there are many reasons. So you say there are many reasons. So what is the treatment for that? So yes, there is a opener. Um, and we know that many women who receive treatment or support do better. And when we talk about support, this could be learning more about mental health problems such as depression or anxiety. It could be thinking about where to get more support, whether it's from your friends or your family or the community. And then also thinking about doing things that are more enjoyable. Things like singing that gospel song when you're cooking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Will helping my Maria with her vegetable garden be one of those activities? Yes, and sometimes speaking to someone kind who you trust, like a friend or a family member, can be really helpful. Sometimes you can speak to a trained counsellor, social worker, 
or a nurse who can lend their ear and talk with you about how you can be better. So, who would like a pamphlet about this? Please! <laughs> Folder 41, folder 41. Charlene Adonis. Sis, you must remember your number. Please. You can get on the bed, ne? Date of your last period? Um, you don't know. I mean, I just the date of your last menstrual period. Sometime in March. Who do you live with? My aunt, my baby, my cousins, and my sisters. Okay, so I'm going to be asking about emotions. You must answer yes or no to each question. Okay. In the last two weeks, have you on some or most days felt unable to stop worrying or thinking too much? I mean, I'm thinking a lot about how I'm going to take care of my baby, support with food and clothes, and I'm worried that my boyfriend might leave. So that's what I'm scared of. Did you tell anyone about this? No. Okay, it's not that bad, yeah? Okay. In the last two weeks, have you on some or most days felt down, depressed or hopeless? I don't know. I, I don't think so. I just feel very stressed all the time. Like I can't do any of my responsibilities. Like I want to, but I can't. Like I just don't leave the house. Sis, we also have a lot of work to do. Did you see how many patients are still in the waiting room? You wanted to do grown-up things, son, so you must be a grown-up now. You have to force yourself to do these things. You're having another baby. Didn't you learn the first time? Hey. In the last two weeks, have you on some or most days had thoughts and plans to harm and kill yourself? No. You think things are hard now? They're gonna get worse when the baby comes. Do you understand? Good, so do you need to see a counsellor? But I really don't think so, your situation isn't that serious. Sissy, do you need to see a counsellor? No, I'm fine. Okay, I'm gonna go and get some stuff to examine you, you must wait here. Could I please have Charlene Adonis? Folder 41? Hi, Charlene. I'm Sister Olafir. Is it okay if I call you Charlene? Yes, okay. thank you. Please follow me this way so we can talk more privately. So, how was it getting to the clinic this morning? Mm, I'm quite tired and it was mm. quite a long journey. I have to try and help. So, see, I'm getting someone to help me with this. Sure, Charlene, it sounds like it's been quite a, a difficult morning. Eh? So we will discuss some of those things later. But for now, if you can maybe begin with your medical history. So, Charlene, 
So if it's okay with you, I would just like to ask you some questions about how you are feeling and this will really help me think about the best way to support your wellness. Okay, but these questions that I answer, are you going to tell anybody about it? Okay, so you don't have to answer anything that you're not comfortable with. Okay, so all your health information is confidential, except if I am worried that you are a danger to yourself or to others, I will need to tell somebody so that we can keep you safe. If I can start with the first question. Have you on some days or most days felt unable to stop worrying or thinking too much? Well, I am thinking thinking too much sort of about how I'm going to support the baby, you know, with like food, clothes, and all those things. And like I'm sort of worried that my boyfriend might just leave me. Mm. So these are some of the things I'm scared about. Yeah, I understand this can be a very difficult time and it can feel, you know, like it's too much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Charlene, in the last two weeks, have you on some days or most days felt down or depressed or hopeless? I've noticed that like my body feels very really heavy and like my head is just full of thoughts. Like I'm just thinking all the time. Mm -hmm. It sounds very really difficult and also it doesn't sound like you're spending time with family and friends. So many women struggle with these sad feelings and too much worry during pregnancy. But you know what's amazing is that even though you had such a difficult night and morning, you still came for your clinic appointment. And for me, that's really great. So well done. Yeah. So just the last of the questions, Charlene. In the last two weeks, have you on some days or most days had thoughts and plans to harm yourself or kill yourself? No, no, no. I would never do that. Mm. Um, it does sound like you are struggling with your thoughts and your feelings and how you are doing things. Um, okay. And we know that when women have extra support, you know, that it helps them, you know, to manage tougher situations. It also gives them a sense of just how strong and resilient they are. Okay, so here at our clinic, we have Dr. Habani, and she sees our maternity unit patients on Wednesdays, and she's really good at listening. Okay, then we also have a counselor who works at the community health center just here in Protea Street, um, and she's there on on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and that's free of charge, okay? In addition to that, we also have a support group for women at the church. Um, it's not far from here, and that's also free of charge, and you don't have to belong to the church in order to be part of that group, okay? What do you think about these options? What are your thoughts? Do you have any concerns? What would happen? With the counsellor, I mean, together the two of you will sort of talk about or learn more about mental health issues. Um, together you'll think about what is most important and think of a plan to help you deal with these difficult situations. Okay, okay. Mm. So, maybe I could like, maybe I could go see you. Mm. That sounds like a really good idea. Mm. No? Um, so I know I've spoken quite a bit mm -hmm. and I just need to make sure that I've explained everything to you clearly. Mm -hmm. So if it's okay with you, can you maybe just, you know, describe to me what we've talked about mm -hmm. so far? Okay, well, you mentioned that if I do go through with this, that she's going to help me, like, process things, help me to get mm -hmm. better and stronger in, like, the mental health stuff, she'll mm -hmm. help with that or so. Yeah. Yes, so exactly. So we really just want to support you to feel better. Okay. Um, are you sure I can't make an appointment with you for days? Um, okay, maybe let's try, for, let's see, maybe for Thursday and then I can get my sister to watch my child. Okay. Mm -hmm.